today I am taking part four of flowering plants and deals with some of the important points concerned with neat examination. Emasculation. Emasculation means removal of anthers from a bisexual plant to prevent self fertilization. This is carried out during the <coughs> hybridization experiments by the plant scientists. Bagging. Bagging means covering the emasculated flowers or unisexual female flowers before they open with a bag made of butter paper. This prevents unwanted cross fertilization. Embryogeny means development of zygote into an embryo. Perisperm generally nucellus disappears, but in some plants, a residual nucellus still remains in the seeds. This condition is known as perisperm. Example, black pepper, beet, etc. Albuminous seeds. Generally, the albumin is consumed during the early embryo development. But sometimes the albumin is not completely consumed and is still and still remains in the seed. Such condition is known as and such seeds are known as albuminous seeds. Example, wheat, maize, barley, castor, sunflower, etc. Dormant state. It is the state of inactivity and arrested growth. And in this state, seeds can remain fertile or alive for many centuries. That we will see later on. Some examples are there. So, dormant state means suspended animation. The metabolic activity occurs very low rate and very little energy is consumed during the dormant state. It is a safety mechanism to overcome unfavorable conditions. Pericard. It is the ovarian wall that develops into a fruit. Examples, mango, geva, orange, etc. True fruit. So, when the, when the ovarian wall develops into a fruit, such fruits are known as true fruits. False fruit. Sometimes, instead of the ovarian wall, the thalamus contributes to the formation of the fruit. Such fruits are known as false fruits. Example, cashew, apple, strawberry, etc. Then, parthenogenic fruits. These fruits develop from unfertilized ovary. And the important thing is, such ovaries do not produce any seeds. Parthenocarpy can be induced by the application of growth hormones. Example for Parthenocarpy is banana. In banana, seeds are completely absent and the bananas develop from unfertilized ovary. Droop. Droop is a fleshy fruit with a thin skin and a central stony hard covering enclosing the seed. Example for droop. Mango, coconut, etc. Then polyembryony. Presence of many embryos in the ovary sac is known as polyembryony. Usually, only one embryo develops in the ovary sac. But sometimes, the surrounding <coughs> nucellar cells penetrate into the ovary sac and they also develop into <coughs> embryos. As a result, instead of one embryo, many embryos develop in the ovary sac. And that condition is known as polyembryon. Example, citrus and the mango. Then segregation of genes. You have studied about Mendel's laws. In the Mendel's first law, which is also known as segregation of genes, in the F2 generation what happens? The genes segregate. Here what happens is, Farmers purchase hybrid seeds for cultivation. But the seeds produced from the crops raised by the farmers are unsuitable for further cultivation. Why? This is because of segregation of genes. 
Here what happens is, so I'll give an example. This is the F1 generation plants which are sold by the seed companies to the farmers. These, these are hybrid plants. These hybrid plants exhibit hybrid vigor or heterosis. As a result, the crop yield will be very high. Then what happens? These F1 plants produce three types of plants in the next generation, in every generation. See, these are the male gametes, these are the female gametes produced by the F1 plants. And when these gametes come together, we get three types of plants and are three types of genotypes. Heterozygous tall, homozygous tall, heterozygous tall and dwarf variety. In this way, genes segregate into three genotypes. As a result, what happens? If these seeds are planted, the yield will go down. That's why the farmers are forced to purchase seeds every year from the seed companies. But this problem can be avoided by apomixes. In the case of apomixes, what happens is, it's a mechanism of production of seeds without fertilization. So here, the F1 plants produce seeds without fertilization. As a result, we, what do we get? We get only F1 plants or F1 plant seeds. As a result, the farmers will not purchase seeds every year from the seed producing companies. We have to remember one main difference between apomixes and parthenogenic fruits. Both are the same. In both the cases, there is no fertilization. But here what happens is in parthenogenic fruits, ovaries develop into fruits, but seeds are not formed. But in the case of apomixes, there is no fertilization, but seeds are formed. And these seeds can be used for cultivation. Here, two examples are given, Astraceae and in grasses, this apomixis takes place. Then, two plant examples are given here. One is Lupinus arci, arti, Arcticus. Arcticus means it was found in the Arctic region. Here, the seeds of these plants were recovered that were 10,000 years old. When these 10,000 year old seeds were planted, they have germinated. It means that for a long, for more than 10,000 years, the seeds remained in a dormant state and still they could germinate. The second one is Phoenix dactylifera. In this case, the seeds were discovered or recovered from the palace of King Herod, they were about 2,000 years old and they were also made to germinate successfully. In this way, even though the seeds are 2,000 years old or 10,000 years old, still they can be germinated because of the long dormancy of seeds in the case of plants, some plants. That is about some of the important points we have not covered in the previous topics under this chapter. Thank you.